Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Show and this you come to you live. Um, welcome to another episode of The Scoop. All those who gave thumbs ups on the last video and dropped comments, nice comments. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for the support. This week, mm, let's get into the news. So, we got a video of President Buhari after so long, about 100 days. It was released very close to the 100 day mark when his media team traveled to the UK to meet with him. And of course, the video was received with mixed reactions. A lot of people, supporters of the president, were very excited that yes, finally we can see the president, he's fine, all those people who have been saying he's dead, well, in your face. Mr. President is not dead. But some, for some people, hey, it's not changed anything, man. The man has been outside the country for so long. What are we talking about? When is he going to come back? I'm talking about those people, a group, very prominent group right now that you can point at that was very dissatisfied with the video is the Resume or Resign Protesters, organized by Charlie Boy. Now, if you don't know, there's a bunch of people, very few group of individuals actually, were organized by Charlie Boy and they've been protesting in Abuja. And of course, they've been doing some other protests in some other part of the country. In fact, in Lagos, they had a sit out recently. And what are they protesting about? They are saying, look, if Mr. President is going to stay out of the country for so long, then he might as well just resign. Remember back in 2010, when Yarada was the president and he was sick, Buhari said, Yaradra should be impeached. So now that he's sick, what's the problem? Why can't he just resign and hand over power to somebody else so that, that person can take over control of things and run the nation? Of course, that didn't go down well with the supporters of the president out there in Abuja as he was attacked and his, of course, fellow protesters um, were attacked with Buhari supporters throwing stones at them, destroying their cars and things like that. As of right now, the protest has been indefinitely suspended, of course, because of uh, safety of life and property of the protesters, which makes absolute sense. For some people, the argument is that the fact that the president has been out of the country doesn't mean that the country is on standstill. After all, according to the constitution, he has handed over power to the vice president. But what I have to say to that is this. Even though he has added power over to the vice president, and of course there are some things said about this peculiar situation in the constitution, there are some things also that cannot be addressed by the constitution. What am I talking about? How people will work with the vice president. We cannot remove the fact that it is the Buhari-led administration, and regardless of what the constitution says, it is not the Oshibajo administration. The way some people will work with the president is very different from the way they will work with the vice president. So the fact that there's been a power transfer because the president has been on medical leave doesn't mean that the, fun the country will function appropriately. Of course, on some occasions, we've seen that the vice president has also had to refer to the president to get approval to make some moves. So yeah, that has definitely slowed down things in the nation. And um, we only wish that the president comes back soon and gets to work. Talking about getting back soon and getting to work, Mr. President says he's happy to come back but his doctors will not let him come back. Some other information also came out during the week from Sahara reporters that said that the aides of the president make as much as $1,000 every day that they stay over there with him. If they're making so much money it means the country is losing money when you consider the fact that the whole team President Barry and his aides have been out there for about 100 days. The big question is why couldn't they fly the doctors into the country instead. You can fly one or two doctors down to the country, maybe their family members. Instead of taking the president and his aides out there, probably would have been cheaper. Or is it that the equipment needed to keep the president alive and to monitor his health are not available in the nation? I don't know, some very tricky questions that we need to ask ourselves out there. And um, when we get answers to those questions, we might know where we're heading as a country. Speaking about where we're heading as a country, sometime during the week, one of the senators said that, um, you know, putting in laws to ensure that Senators have to make their children study in Nigeria is not exactly the best thing. How can you say that? Because most of these senators, they send out their kids to study abroad to get the best education. Meanwhile, there are thousands of Nigerian youths who don't have the money to go abroad and who have to study in the country. I'm one of them. I studied here in Nigeria. I'm not so terrible, am I? <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. Why would a senator say something like that? And that's why I have problem with the Not Too Young to Run campaign. It's, even though it's a good move, I don't feel it's an effective move. The only time I feel we will start to experience true change in this country is when we get to a point where those political positions, those political offices are no longer attractive. During the week, a video came out online that showed some young men in black outfits and blackberry and they referred to themselves as the Biafra Security Service. Uh, of course, that was also received with mixed feelings on the internet and on social media, with a lot of people saying, what is Namdi Kanu doing this time around? This is a big joke. 
What is this? What is the commander in chief of the armed forces of Biafra to defend Biafra? What are we talking about here? I thought the point was that we're supposed to try to get Biafra peacefully. Why are we now talking about having a, a security service unit and all that? Of course, I took to the streets to talk to people here in Lagos, find out what they feel about it. Some people said, oh, it's no big deal. It's just the same as APC. I mean, it's just the same as having the OPC here in Lagos and, you know, just all the security bodies just to make sure that things are going on fine in different geopolitical zones of the country. Since the Niger Delta also had their own militants and things like that. We just hope that this doesn't degenerate into something violent. We hope that their stance is peaceful and their purpose is in fact peaceful. Some people think that the reason they were created is so that they can safeguard the life of Nandi Kano, who well, has been receiving a lot of threats actually. This week, Acting President Oshiba just said, you know what, from now until forever, Nigeria is no longer playing or joking with hate speeches, okay? Next time there's a hate speech from you and you are nabbed, you'll be treated as a terrorist. So to all those people out there who consider themselves social media soldiers, and of course are always typing all sorts of things in the comment section, thinking nobody can see them, remember that people can always check your profile, and then from your profile they can find out where you live and find out all sorts of information about you. The Nigerian government is actually taking this war to the social media. So I'm just warning you, for those of you who like to say all sorts of nasty things in the comments below, if you're not living outside the country, chances are you can actually be tracked down right now. We've heard of cases in the past where individuals were actually tracked down by the government and were put in jail. So please, please, please be careful with the kind of things you see on the internet. The government isn't playing this time around. Yes, there's freedom of speech, but if it's a hate speech, you'll be treated as a terrorist henceforth. This week, we got some terrible news, very terrible news for the Nigerian police from the National Bureau of Statistics. According to them, the policemen are the public officials who take the most bribes. Of course, that's not hard to believe for a lot of people because when you talk to people out there, you find out that most of them have run into one trouble or the other with the police. If it's not them collecting money from you, maybe 20 naira from a boss you're in, it's just something has happened somewhere with you and the police and it most likely ended up um, with a bad story. So this is a very bad statistics for the police and of course during the week also a video surfaced online of policemen dragging a group of young men into a bus around Aja and um, allegedly extorting them of 300,000 naira for not showing them their phones. Of course, on different occasions, the police management of the police, top echelon of the police has said, look, policemen are not out there to check your phones. So we don't know why policemen on the streets still do that. We hope something can be done about the issue. The Academic Staff Union of Universities has again embarked on another indefinite strike. They do this from time to time because the federal government just does not pay attention to their needs or they promise them something and they don't get it. And in fact, yes, recently during this week, they declared that, look, we're going on some industrial action and we're going on strike indefinitely. Good thing is this, the Minister of Education, Adamo Adamo, actually acknowledged the fact that yes, the government failed them. They haven't fulfilled their own end of the deal that they agreed with um, ASO. So yes, that's a good move. Although they discussed and had some discussion, of course, after the indefinite strike, was declared, it did not end up well, and um, nobody really knows what's happening. But according to the federal government, the strike should be ended within the space of a week from the time you're watching this video. So yeah, that's a good move. We hope that you know they can both find common ground and people can actually go back to school and not have to go back to the times when you know people will be out of school for like six months to a year, those terrible times. Miss Tioluwani, Comfort Tioluwani graduated as the best student at the University of Wales in the UK. Good move. That's it. That's what I'm taking on the scoop today. Thank you for joining me. My name is Shion Adetunji. Hey, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down there. We hit the big 10K, guys. Big shout out to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. Woo, woo, woo. We could have gotten this far without you guys. Thank you so much. If you like this, share it, of course. Go like our Facebook page also, and then follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Till I come again next time, goodbye.